Welcome to Mastermind Gameplay, where engineering takes it to a whole new level. If you haven't subscribed already, please feel free to do so so you don't miss out on future videos. Here is the new ship, the Scrambler. It is actually spinning using two different rotors, which keeps it completely stable. In order to do this and still be able to use my large rear thruster, I've incorporated a few event controllers and I'll show you how to set them up later on. This little thing isn't much to look at and its primary purpose that I use it for is just scouting. If I want to, say, find an enemy and mark a GPS point for my AI drones, I can quickly get there and back without them following me. For the controls, I've set it up to increase or decrease the thrust override for my large ion drive. And at the same time, the forward ion drives will automatically shut off once the large ion drive is actually propelling us. This prevents us from fighting ourselves and the large ion drive in the back. As soon as the large ion drive is off, the forward ion drives will actually kick in again and slow us back down. It'll make more sense in a minute. For the most part, it's pretty easy to control. Not too much movement back and forth. And there you have it. So you can see that the forward ion drives cut on and off as we kick on and off the large ion drive in the back. This is all done with event controllers. Kind of gives a cool cinematic look to a ship when you're able to spin half the body and still be able to slow down. See, as I said, it's pretty good at performing with agility. Maneuvering is pretty simple. So, without further ado, I think we're just going to have to go ahead and build another one so I can show you how it comes together. This does take a bit of time, mainly because a projector does not allow you to project anything past the first rotor. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build the rear end of this thing and then program it. First, we'll start off by activating our projector, which as you can see in the corner, it really just gave us the first portion. It also doesn't build the rotating arms or anything on the rotor because those are considered a separate or a sub grid. Here's where I mounted the first event controller and the second event controller. The rest of the bottom here is pretty much just batteries. I put enough small batteries on here so I don't have to use an oversized large battery and it keeps it more sleek. All the steel blocks I'm using are light steel blocks, none of them are heavy steel blocks, which enables us to move a bit quicker through the space. Now you can pretty much set this thing up any way you want. On the front here, if you wanted to change out the antenna, move it somewhere else, and put a gun, you probably could. For all practical purposes though, I skipped putting a gun on this because I already have a bunch of AIs that have weapons on them. This is more, like I said, to set a specific GPS location for my drones to fly to. The other day I saw on Reddit that somebody was looking for a way to extend the range without actually having to sit at that specific range before they release, say, their AI drones to attack an enemy. So I'm going to show you how that's possible in the next video. This is powered by two nuclear reactors instead of hydrogen. It saves us a lot of space, but it does cost you uranium. I think that's most of the front end here. Maybe a spot here or there.
it is a pretty quick build. Altogether, I think this build took me about 45 minutes. And that just depends on which mod you want to put on here. Okay, I think that's about everything. I start out by putting on this small merge block to our rotor head. And then from here, you want to lock your rotor because if you don't lock the rotor, it could inadvertently turn and it'll give you a different direction on your large ion thrust. So you want it set to zero before you connect the next merge block. So for the next merge block, I simply build up and over the first merge block down one block and then add the second rotor. From there you add the second merge block. But I think that's too far of a distance so I'm going to cut these down to just one block distance away. And then throw on this merge block here if I can. Now these merge blocks aren't going to necessarily stick together until we take that top part of the support off. But first, again, we want to check our rotor. I think it's, let's see, rotor 2 on here. I'm going to go ahead and label this rear rotor. And rotor lock. And then we're going to set the rotor displacement to zero. Because we really don't want it to stick out too far and our merge blocks will pull themselves together either way. As I took off that block, you could see the merge blocks come together and turn green, locking into place. You want to make sure they locked into place before you waste your time building the rest of the rear end here. For this, I'm going to start with two blocks down because the large ion drive is three blocks by two blocks. I want the two blocks on the bottom. That way we have a center of mass thrust when we build this. You don't necessarily have to add any of these decorative blocks on the outside, but it kind of goes with the decor of the front. If you want it to stay skeletal, I suppose that's an option. I'm just using the half blocks on the side to save weight and it might actually prevent some damage to the large ion thruster. Won't necessarily stop a bullet or anything, but if there's debris that we run into, at least we won't damage our thruster. And on the top here, we're going to use the slope block. This is just a 2 by one by one block, basically. And on the sides, it's just filled in with half blocks or sloped half blocks. I always need to take a minute to remember how I put this thing together the last time. I don't think this is the right one. Maybe it's a different one. Oh, yeah, I remember now. The two by one by one slope block and then we're partially covering the rear thrust. I think we just have to finish these sides a bit on the top, and that's about it. Overall, if you wanted to skip putting all these blocks on here, you might save yourself about 15 minutes. But on the rear, I also like to put batteries just so we have the extra power, because this large ion thruster does consume a lot of electricity when we use it. 
that and using your maneuverable control thrusters, you're gonna watch your power bar turn red. I had that problem the first time I designed this. But with the modifications and the additional batteries, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Just put one of these here, one of these here. Sometimes it's a real Tetris game, trying to figure out which way these blocks can go and still look decent. And I think that's most of the blocks there. We just need to put the batteries in here. And that should do it after we weld these ones up. Just need to cover the entire thing with finalized welding. I don't know how I missed that spot. And then on the corner pieces, I'm using the small triangular ones. Oh, ion thruster. On the corner pieces, I'm just using the small triangular ones, but I change it to the battle armor and red. Same color of red, but when you change the texture, it does change the hue of the color. Again, these are really just for cosmetic and not necessarily required for the ship to work. I believe that's everything. Yep. I think we're ready to just go ahead and build the center here. The center is two blocks out from the forward merge block. And then I think it was another two by one. Yeah, two by one by one. And then we're going to put this slope block. And one on the other side. Essentially, once you get one side built, it's pretty easy to duplicate on the other side. I think it's more of a matter of remembering how I put these the first time. Then we just have three regular steel blocks forward. Two by one by one. Half slope. If I can line it up here. Another two by one by one. Three steel blocks. And then we'll put ion thrusters on the forward end of this after I weld them all in. I think that looks pretty good. There we go. And for the ion thrusters, I created a barrier for these as well because you don't really want them to be exposed and then run into some random rock or debris they have sitting out. These are simple two by one by one half blocks. I have run into things inadvertently like say the corner of an asteroid and totally obliterated my ion thrusters. Not intentionally, I just not that great at driving sometimes. A 
I think we just have to do the bottom here. For the most part, that'll protect them, but if you want to make it cut in a bit and have a little bit different color to it, that's what I'm going to do next. It only takes about a minute or two, but I'm going to throw on the corner blocks in a different color, of course. We're going back to the red and battle armor. Sometimes you may see me rotating it multiple times in one direction or another. And it's just mainly because I'm trying to stick to only using two keys on the keyboard in order to line them up. I'm sure there's a more efficient way of doing this, but so far I pretty much stick to just these two keys. And it pays off and sometimes it doesn't pay off. All right, it's gotta be around here somewhere, there it is. almost done it's always important to protect your most vital assets on a ship so if you have any types of joints or if you have any ion drives or thrusters then I would definitely cover them and if you by chance run into an enemy and they're just lightly shooting at you to get your attention the steel will hold up just long enough for a couple of shots so you can get away. Finally, I'm going to cover up these merge blocks. Don't really want anything to happen to them, and since they're merged, if you put blocks connecting both of them, even if something happens to the merge block, the steel blocks will still hold it together. It's like a double reinforcement if you think about it. It doesn't take too much to cover this and unfortunately we don't have a good way of covering that back rotor. Just because we did that it would not be able to spin. So that one will stay exposed for the most part. Oh come on, I know I can line this. There we go. One more to go. All right, and I think that's it. Just throw some lights on. And these, again, are just for aesthetics. You don't have to put any lights or extra things. It's just so you're kind of highlighting your cockpit from a distance. I think around an eight meter radius should work. And then I set these on the blue and the green hue down to 10. That gives us a nice deep red look. Of course you can choose any color you want. I just seem to go back to red and black for most of my aircraft and ships. Not too shabby. Before we move this thing though, I want to make sure that I set all our devices correctly. So the rear rotor and forward rotor are combined together but we have to set them individually so unlimited lower unlimited upper rotor displacement again is going to be zero velocity is going to be eight and then for the forward is going to be the exact opposite besides the lower upper and rotor displacement is still going to be zero. 
Sometimes I do miss things on here. If it doesn't work the first time, try and try again. I noticed that I did not change this forward one, and somehow I have two forward rotors. I think I misspelled something somewhere or labeled something incorrectly. That is strange. Well, let's go ahead and set this one to a negative 8. This should be the right one either way. I think I mistakenly labeled the rotor that we have for building this apparatus as the forward rotor also. Either way, doesn't matter. Adjust our interior lights again because they seem kind of bright. Alright, so event controller 1, we want thrust percent equal to or greater than 0 0.9, and I want the large ion thruster as the thruster designated. Then, oh, I forgot to group these other thrusters. Alright, so first step is go for this ion thruster up and ion thruster up. And they might be labeled something else when you build this, but for mine they were directional up. When I built the blueprint, I made sure to mark the other ion thrusters as hidden, so that way whenever we added the forward ion thrusters, they would be the only ones that showed up. And then your thrust override, we're going to put that all the way up but first make sure it's turned off. And then for the event controller, now we can go ahead and select the action. Groups, reverse ion drives, or ion thrust either way. And we're gonna set it to off because we want them off when the large ion thruster is activated. For event controller 2, we want thrust equal to or less than zero. And then select the large ion thruster and add it to the list. Then select actions, groups, the reverse ion thrusters, and you want them to turn on. This should only turn them on when we are at zero large ion thrust. Now we're going to put the rotors just for the heck of it. And then your large ion thrust. Increase your override. And then decrease your override. These are going to be your primary controls for your thrusters overall. Turn these rotor drives off. Rotor unlocked. And we have to separate ourselves from this. I probably should have used another merge block like I did before. It would have been a lot more convenient. But I didn't plan on keeping this full time for a build area. It's primarily just enough space for me to be able to demonstrate how this thing works. Just throw a 2 by one by one block back in here. And that is everything. One quick look and yeah, let's try this thing out. You may notice that the rear will turn as we turn until the rotors are actually turned on, if that makes sense. So whenever you turn, the rear will spin. But if you turn the rotors on, it's not going to move anymore. It's going to realign itself. And I can see, since the rear is moving by itself, we definitely did not have the forward rotor unlocked. But now with both of them unlocked and properly spinning, the rear rotor is actually spinning backwards, and the forward rotor is spinning forward which causes the rear to stay straight.
Well, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video, and please leave your tips and tricks in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it.